Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. I'm over here in Tacoma Park, Maryland, and I'm talking with Bob Cogshall, who is connected with Nova Labs, a makerspace in Western Virginia. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Hi, Phil. How are you? Thanks for having me on. You've got great uh, lighting and audio on your side. Do you have uh, a fiber optic internet connection? Are you on Fios over there? Or? Uh, I, I believe it's just a uh, cable, uh, cable modem, uh, okay. but I have a, a fairly decent camera. Um, yeah. Great. Hey, tell me, uh, I've been reading about small batch assembly, which is a little business, right? Is that a business? Yes, it is. It's a, uh, my startup, and uh, I'm part of Nova Labs, and I'm in, uh, uh, Nova Labs has an incubator program, uh, sort of an ad hoc one, and I'm the first one. I'm the anchor tenant. I'm the incubatee of, uh, of Nova Labs. Great. Now, Tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about the business. What, what is its function? What is it? What service does it provide? Well, we're an electronics assembly service. So basically, what we do is we take uh, blank circuit boards from customers that look like this, and we put the components on them. So the finished product looks like this. And uh, that's a, a bit. Uh, Something that anybody who has uh, dabbled in Arduino uh, or Raspberry Pi uh, has probably um, run into, uh, if they've gotten fairly serious about it, uh, they, they are assembling, they're stuck with assembling their own boards on the kitchen table, and that gets to be uh, very meticulous after a while. So um, I decided, I had the same problem as a maker, uh, so I just started, decided to start this service. Bob, that, that's so interesting. And you were starting the service at the same time as Nova Labs was getting off the ground, so you decided that they might be a synergy. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. Um, I was relatively new to the area, and I had no uh, contacts. I didn't know any other local nerds. And um, this was about the same time uh, uh, things like meetup.com were invented. And I had... Uh, and makerspaces were starting to uh, take off and, and, and appear in a lot of different cities. And uh, I hooked up with uh, the original founders of Nova Labs, and uh, they were looking uh, to expand into the next uh, unit. And uh, they, uh, I said, well, um, how about I rent some rooms from you and um, start my, my uh, maker-oriented business? And they said, well, oh, that's great. Um, and so that's that's where it uh, it started, and we and Nova Labs was uh, able to expand into the next unit, and um, they've got a classroom in the back, and um, wood shop in the front, and then they've got me over here, also. So um, yeah, it was around 2000, um, I, I, 10 or 11, uh, I believe, uh, that uh, this all came together. Now, the function of small batch assembly is to lower the barrier to entry so that more people could get into electronics design. Is that, is that correct? Yes, yes. I saw, I was studying the, the maker movement and um, uh, wondering if, if there was uh, uh, some way, uh, uh, some business that I would, could start uh, that would uh, 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 cater to the maker movement and solve my own personal problem of getting boards assembled low volume and uh, I, I just I just saw that uh, the existing uh, electronic assembly houses were uh, not focused on uh, the individual um, you know let's say garage or, or, or kitchen table type uh, DIY uh, person and uh, so uh, and because those uh, that that kind of customer uh, has is is usually on a very tight budget and only needs a few boards made. And the existing businesses uh, were uh, oriented or, or geared around uh, doing um, fully customized work in thousand unit quantities. Um, so that was kind of the that was kind of the conception uh, of the of the idea. And so. Um, um, that that's how I put it together, and uh, going forward, I uh, hope to be able to um, do everything, um, orient um, my services uh, that I provide uh, to that that kind of customer. 
Bob, that's real interesting. So um, uh, I'm beginning to understand your business is enabling hobbyists, but maybe also researchers and entrepreneurs, um, and things will things will become possible that previously weren't. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, in the future we might also see more electronics classes in high schools where uh, students are designing things as part part of their uh, high school education that uh, we don't need to wait until you're an adult to start designing electronics. Yes, I think that's going to be uh, related to, to STEM. There's a lot of different uh, aspects uh, uh, in, in science and technology education. Um, and I think actually the maker movement can can trace its uh, uh, beginnings back toward this this pent up frustration that people had. Um, everyone started carrying around uh, smartphones and living on layers and layers and layers of technology they didn't understand. And uh, there was just an urge to uh, tinker, for lack of a better word. Uh, people really just wanted to hey. Can I blink an LED with my my cell phone? That's where it starts. But then it's okay. Well, let's let's build a flying robot, and that's where it goes. And um, electronics and uh, is is sort of a well. It's sort of you could look at it a couple, a couple different ways. There's a lot of uh, software development is the is the first thing we would hope that uh, uh, would be uh, finding itself more and more taught more and more at, at the uh, High school level, at least, and perhaps grade school, and and contact with um, uh, robotics and electronics goes hand in hand with that. Um, so uh, you, you really uh, so there this uh, interest in soft learning software and learning to program, um, learning electronics is part of that. Okay. Now, uh, did you want to explain a little bit about the machine behind you? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Um, so the key element to getting the, these little parts onto the board is um, one of these machines called a pick-and-place machine. So the pick-and-place machine um, really is a, an industrial robot uh, whose only job in life is to pick up these tiny little parts and put them onto the circuit board. So uh, it basically consists of this head that can move around on a bed very accurately. Uh, it has a uh, nozzle, which uh, you probably can't see very clearly, but um, this goes up and down. And on the end, there's a little uh, vacuum nozzle. And then the vacuum nozzle uh, goes over to a part, picks it up, and then um, moves it over to the circuit board and puts it on the circuit board. And uh, it can do about one part per per second, roughly. And the parts can come from uh, a couple of different areas. They come on uh, reels, actually. Uh, uh, this is a typical reel. It comes on, and actually, if you uh, older people in the audience may say, "Oh, gosh, that's a uh, eight millimeter. Looks just like an eight millimeter uh, film reel." And you'd be correct because this, in fact, is an eight millimeter wide reel. And I believe that they borrowed the, the standard uh, from 8 millimeter film when they were um, when these machines were first started being um, uh, d designed and built. And so uh, the parts uh, on the reel, the the parts come on come off the reel on tape, and each of these little spots uh, would be occupied by a, a part. And um, I've got a little. Um, this is a. We're going to see if I can screen share the uh, little uh, GIF movie I have. Should work. Uh, oh, that was wrong. Sorry about that. We'll try one more. And here. Can you see that? Bill? Uh, this may not be coming through. No, it's, it's coming. It's coming just fine. Okay. I, I, I see it. Yep. Okay, so um, this is a, a close-up of the, the the business end of the machine, and it's picking up parts. 
uh, from on the left and it's putting them down onto the board um, on the right. And this is actually uh, a uh, each one of those little white things is an LED, RGB LED, and this is an array of um, LEDs, and it's uh, designed for a customer. Um, it's being built for a customer who uh, uh, puts these in R2D2s and astromech models. Got it. Now, the software that you need, is this uh, expensive software to design electronics? Uh, no, there's a couple of free options. Uh, uh, there's something called uh, KiCad, and uh, there is uh, another one called Eagle. Um, and uh, Eagle is uh, has a free version. KiCad is completely open source. And uh, uh, that's what you use to uh, lay out your circuit board. You design your schematic. A typical example, let's say um, you've, been, uh, you've come up with an Arduino project and you're using an Arduino uh, and a shield. And let's just pretend you've invented a, a, a desktop coffee roasting machine. And so the shield has some specialized electronics to control the, the coffee roasting process. And you say to yourself, I want to I make a product out of this. Well, one of the first steps would be to take the components on the shield and, the take the com and take the Arduino and put those all onto one circuit board. So that would be something you would do in the electronics uh, design tool in KiCad or Eagle. And there are also others. And uh, that would, uh, you would then uh, have the circuit board produced and you would send this out um, to a place like uh, Oshpark, which is another uh, great uh, maker-oriented uh, company that does the blank circuit boards. And then, um, then you send the blank circuit boards to me along with the components and I'll put them on the board for you. Yes. Um, Bob, tell me about SparkFine Electronics and your relationship, the folks out in Boulder. Oh, sure. Uh, well, um, Nate Seidel uh, has been uh, very helpful. He has uh, uh, provided um, a mentoring. I have a mentoring relationship with Spark Run Electronics. That's the summary. And and he and his uh, uh, staff have been very generous uh, uh, with their time. I went and I went out to visit and in discussions with email, in particular Matt Bolton, who's uh, uh, the person who's responsible for all of their electronics manufacturing. Um, and um, uh, uh, Pete Doctor, who uh, is the head of engineering, uh, uh, gave a very uh, good and, and critical feedback about about my idea as I when it was just an idea. Great. Um, you know, I got to ask you this very this question. Tell me how you were involved with the development of this little command that we use in Linux, sudo. Um, oh. Well, that's my Wikipedia claim to fame. Um, I, uh, uh, I, I am credited as uh, the co-author of Sudo, okay. and uh, it, it was uh, back in the day, uh, around 1980, 81. Um, I was a uh, uh, just I got my first job, and I was the computer technician at the uh, SUNY Buffalo Department of Computer Science, and uh, I had access to this. Uh, uh, state-of-the-art uh, mini computer called a VAX 11750 and it was running uh, Unix and um, uh, I was responsible for uh, uh, giving people access to it and too many people would come to me and say I want the root password I'm a computer science professor I know what I'm doing and and myself and my boss were like no you can't have the password so a friend of mine who just loved to program as, as, and uh, was a better programmer than me at the time, uh, went in, came in and just said, oh, let me, let me, give me access to the VAX, Bob. I said, okay. And then he uh, said, oh, do you need anything written, any code written? And I thought, well, I do have this problem with people uh, writing, uh, wanting uh, the, the super user password. So can you write a program that uh, uh, would uh, uh, give them root permission on a per command basis yeah. and he said okay and he uh, went off and wrote it and he said okay what do you want to call it and I uh, I sat there and I, I thought well it could be su, su uh, s, uh, okay, uh, root as root I didn't 
and I just tried my, you know, typed on my fingers. I decided S U D O, uh, sudo would be the 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 best uh, uh, shorthand uh, short command command for it. So, um, uh, that's a bit of trivia. That was uh, ten years before Linux. Uh, it's quite an early uh, computer uh, pioneer, I'd get, I'd say. Yeah, well, that's proved how much of a you know a, a fossil I am. I rode dinosaurs uh, to right, right, to the computing right. center and right. punch cards and everything. Good. Bob, is there anything else you wanted to add? This, I'm finding this so interesting, and I'm I'm hoping that folks here in the Washington D.C. area are going to come by Nova Labs and uh, get to see the equipment. Oh yes, uh, so there's nova-labs.org uh, is 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 the makerspace. And uh, we're getting to be a, a pretty pretty busy place. We have uh, over 30 uh, full-time members, and um, we have over a thousand people on the uh, Nova Makers Meetup. And there are uh, robotic robotics programs, uh, drone programs, uh, CNC laser cutter uh, uh, classes. Um, there's there's something happening here uh, pretty much every day. And um, if anyone wants to come out and visit me, they're more than welcome. Um, they can visit my website, which is uh, smallbatchassembly.com, and uh, just uh, uh, send me an email. Great. Hey, thanks so much for taking time to talk today. Sure. Thanks very much, Phil. Thanks for having me.